Let's take a look at some sorting algorithms. A sorting algorithm is an algorithm that essentially sorts the elements of a list into increasing order, and that is numerical, that is alphabetical, whatever it is that we're trying to order, that's how we would order them. So we often use sorting algorithms in large databases like uh, sorting customer or part numbers, sorting prices, phone directories, um, obviously phone directories by last name, etc. Um, there are over 100 sorting algorithms that exist out there in the world. We're not going to look at all 100 of them. You're welcome. So the first one we're going to look at is the bubble sort algorithm, and that algorithm basically compares adjacent elements, interchanging them if they're in the wrong order. It may require several passes. So we're going to look at this one together. Pass one, I would look at four and three, and my algorithm would say, hey, those are in the wrong number, or the wrong order. So now I have three, four, five, two, one. Still in the first pass, I would then look at four, five. Those are in the right order, so I don't have to switch them. I would then look at five, two, and five, two is not in the right order, so I would switch them. So three, four, two, five, one. And then I would look at 5, 1, and 5, 1 is not in the right order, so I would have 3, 4, 2, 1, 5. That is all happening in pass 1. So I looked at each pair. Then in pass 2, I would just then start at the top again. So pass 2, I would say 3 and 4 are in the right order. 4 and 2 are not in the right order, so they're going to switch. So this is 3 two, four, and then I would look at four, one, because now it's a four. I, I'll go ahead and rewrite it like I did before. Then I'm going to look at four, one. Those are not in the right order, which gives me three, two, one, four, five, and then I would look at four, five, and those are in the right order. So that brings us on to pass three, where I start again at the top, and at the top I would say three, two are not in the right order, so now it's two, three. I would look at three, one, which are not in the right order. So that gives me two, one, three. Um, then I would look at three, four, which are, and four, five, which are. So now that brings me to pass four, where I would look at two, one, and say those are not in the right order. So that's now one, two. And then I would look at two, three, those are, three, four, those are, and four, five, those are. So it took me four passes to get where I wanted using the bubble sort algorithm. So as you can see, it's not necessarily efficient, but it is effective. So let's look at our pseudocode for our bubble sort procedure. We're looking at a procedure called bubble sort. We're dealing with a list of values with at least one val or at least two values because if we had one value then we wouldn't need to sort them we would just have one value then we're saying for i which is of course the subscript um, i from 1 to n minus 1 and then from j which goes from 1 to n minus i we're essentially saying let's compare the two values j and the value after that and if the value is greater than the value that comes after that, then we have to interchange them. And otherwise we don't, obviously. And so if we continue that procedure for all of those values, our output is that we get our values in increasing order. The other sorting algorithm I want to talk to you about is the insertion sort algorithm. And the insertion sort algorithm essentially starts with our second value and says, hey, is this in the right spot? If not, let's put these two in the right spot. So my first pass, I would end up with three, four, and then still have five, two, one. My second pass, I would be looking at five and saying, is five in the right spot compared to three, four, five? And so my pa second pass says, yeah, it sure is but I still have two, oops, two and one to contend with. My third pass 
says, let's just look at the two. Where would the two go in that list? And the two would go in front of the three, four, five, which still leaves me with one to contend with. And then in the fourth pass, I would be looking at putting the one where it goes, which is right at the beginning. And so now I have everything in the proper order. So the insertion sort pseudocode has quite a bit going on, but essentially what it is saying is we have to take our values from one through N with obviously two or more values. And we're saying for J equals two to N, starting at I equals one, essentially what we're saying is let's compare two to one and switch their order if necessary. If not, then we go on to the next one. And then essentially we're looking step by step for where does it go in the list that we have already essentially set. So that is the basis of the pseudocode for the insertion sort is that we're going to set those values and then our algorithm is going to check the locations to determine the correct placement and our output is going to be that our values are all in the increasing order. So let's take a look at a couple of practice and again keep in mind that we might have several um, passes through but I'm going to start with the bubble sort and what I'm trying to do is obviously sort these from least to greatest. So in my first pass I would compare 42 to 19 which would tell me that those two are not in the right order. And then I would um, compare 42 to 32, which would tell me that those are not in the right order. And then I would compare 42 to 11, which tells me those are not in the right order. So 19, 32, 11, uh, 4281. Remember, still on the first pass, I would then compare 42 to 8, and those are not in the right order. So 1932, 11, 8, 42, 1, and then 42 to 1, those are not in the right order. So 1932, 11, 8, 1, 42. That was all in the first pass. The second pass, I would compare 19 and 32. Those are right in the right order. 32 to 11, which gives me 19, 11, 32, 8, 1, 42. I would then compare 32 to 8, giving me 19, 11, 8, 32, 1, 42. I would then compare 32 to 1. So 19, 11, 8, 1, 32, 42. And lastly, 32 to 42, which is correct. So we're going to continue on to the next pass. So notice on my first pass, 42 is in the right spot. And now 32 is in the right spot. And so now I'm going to start with 19 and 11. Those are not in the right order. So 11, 19, 8, 1, 32, 42. And then I'm going to compare 19 and 8. So I've got 11, 8, 19, 1, 32, 42. And then I'm going to compare 19 and 1. So 11, 8, 1, 19, 32, 42. And again, I now have another one in the correct order because the rest of them are OK. Now I'm going to go to my next pass. I'm going to compare 11 and 8, so I get 8, 11, 1, 19, 32, 42. Compare 11 and 1, giving me 8, 1, 11, 19, 32, 42. That passes over, and I now have 11 in the correct spot. And then in my last one, I'm going to get 1, 8, by comparing the first two terms, 19, 32, 42. So now I have used the bubble sort and my elements are sorted correctly. Hopefully I can fit in the insertion sort correctly. Um, so let's look at what that looks like. My insertion sort starts with the first two and places them in the correct order. 
So 1942, the rest of them are still to be placed. My next pass would then compare this 32 and basically compare it against both the 19 and the 42. And so it would place correctly the 32 between the 19 and the 42, but still leave 11, 8, and 1 to be placed. My next pass would put the 11 in the proper spot, so I would have 11, 19, 32, 42. Keep in mind that process is involved because it's actually comparing it, um, whoops, 8 and 1, comparing it to each and every value, um, not just I mean, I'm just saying, yes, it goes between these two, but the computer would be checking every single value. Now, 8 is going to go in the proper spot. So I would have 8, 11, 19, 32, 42, with still a 1 left to determine. And then, of course, my final answer, 1, 8, 11, 19, 32, 42. And that is the same answer we came up with either way. Um, obviously, insertion took less time.